For those who want the luxury of a big car, but in a smart little package, these premium super minis are the height of urban chic. But which would you choose between the Mini, the Audi A1 and the recently revised DS3? To help you decide, I'm going to compare their practicality. Yeah, that, that's just a bluff. Critique their design. Even non-car lovers could spot one in a crowded car park. Test what they like to drive. It's, it's vanilla. And find out exactly what you get for your money. This is just a Citroen hiding beneath some DS makeup. So let's start with the styling, because ultimately it's these cars' looks which warrant their premium over normal run-of-the-mill super minis. Few cars are as instantly recognisable as the Mini. In fact, even non-car lovers could spot one in a crowded car park from half a mile away. They're <laughs> just that distinctive. OK, so it's put on quite a lot of weight over the years that soon it will be against the Trade Descriptions Act to actually call it a Mini. But for now, it still really looks the part. And there's really nothing quite like it on the road. The A1, on the other hand, just looks, well, A1. It's a typically Audi design. Maybe not the most exciting, but it's neat, tidy, efficient. It doesn't necessarily stand out, but then not everyone is a show-off. Though ultimately, it's that badge, not the design, which sells the car. Citroen wants this badge to have the same allure, and that's why it's dropped its name to make DS a brand in its own right. It's also given the DS3 a new grille to mark the occasion, and this little French number looks as good as anything German. But while the DS3's interior does definitely have plenty of eye candy, it feels a little bit more like a tarted up super mini than a premium car made small like the two German machines. And really, you know, you get the sense that this is just a Citroen hiding beneath some DS makeup. Also, there's no cup holders, the door bins are around your ankles, and the DS3's new touchscreen infotainment system is as easy to fathom as the Enigma code. And it seems to have less processing power than an Apple One. The Minis, on the other hand, is a doddle to use, with a little swivel wheel controller and it's super slick. So too is the rest of the cabin. OK, so like a boy band, it's a little bit overstyled with a toggle switches and rocket launcher starter button. But there's a genuine feeling of big car quality here that the others just can't quite match. The Audi does get close though, and even though the design has been around for a while, it's fairly timeless. The same can't be said for the blocky Commodore 64 style graphics of the infotainment screen. And while the system is bettered slightly by the Minis, it's still way superior to the DS3s. But when it comes to the boot, the Audi wins out. It's got some nice features like tie down hooks, another one to hang your shopping off, a false floor, and these extra lights so that other drivers can see you at night with the tailgate up. Overall, it has the best combination of capacity and flexibility. You don't feel like you're lacking space, and you can even fit a bike in by removing just one wheel. If only locating the Isofix fittings for a baby seat was easier. Installing a seat in the Mini is even harder, as it's a tight squeeze to manoeuvre one into the back seat. The boot is the best thought out though, there's lots of clever touches to make it as easy to use as possible, though ultimately it falls down because its outright carrying capacity is the worst here, by some margin. The best in this respect is the DS3. It has the most outright space, also huge doors means it's the easiest car to fit a child seat in. The problem is that it's lacking any clever ideas. The huge load lip and raised seats hamper usability of that boot. To make matters worse, this DS3 is the least comfortable in the back. It's really cramped for knee room and head room. And while it's the only one that does have three seat belts, yeah, that, that's just a bluff because you won't want to carry three people back here unless they're really small children. Normal size adults will struggle. Larger ones, pff, they'll just hate it. And three, well, let's just face it, that ain't really going to happen. It won't happen in the Audi either as it's a strict two seater in the back. Still, legroom is okay. The problem is headroom is quite tight, something tall people will really notice. Surprisingly though, tall people will have enough headroom in the Mini. It's legroom that's the problem. Overall though, it's the lesser of three evils in the back seats. Really though, you don't buy one of these cars for your passengers, you buy them for yourself and how they make you feel. And in the case of the Audi, it's all about being just easy and relaxing to drive. The engines are efficient, they're slick, and I think this car is the, well, it's the quietest on the move of the three. It's also very comfy, so long as you don't go for the sport suspension and really large wheels. You know, this car, it's perfect for people who want to get from A to B in the most dignified and unflappable manner. The thing is, it's, it's just a little bit dull in the way it drives. It's, it's vanilla. Hagen-Dazs vanilla, I grant you, but, but still vanilla. 
In comparison, the character for Minnie is a tub of Ben and Jerry's clever cookies. And you can tell instantly that it's absolutely packed full of flavour. It's such a fun, darty little thing to drive, and it turns every single journey into an event. You know, I love the car for that, and I love the way that you feel so connected to it, to the controls, and you can really feel the road. Thing is though, because of that, it's not gonna be for everybody. Some people just won't like its excitable puppy ways. So yes, it's got the most sophisticated chassis of the three cars on test. And the suspension is softer than on previous Minis, but some people will still find it too harsh. And also they'll be put off by the fact that it does make quite a racket from the tires when you're driving along at speed. And that's where the DS3 comes in. It's a halfway house between the other two. It does the best job of combining comfort with fun. Yes, it's not as much of a laugh as the Mini, but it's not as tiring either. And while it lacks the, the polish of the Audi, it's still comfortable and quiet enough that you can do a long journey and arrive at your destination stress-free. You know, sometimes with cars, it's better to be a jack of all trades and master of none. And the DS fills that brief perfectly. The cars we have here on test aren't matched for engines nor specification. However, the Mini and DS3 ranges both start from just under £14,000, while the Audi A1 starts from £14,500. But when you match the cars like for like, the DS3 works out the better value car overall. And that means you'll end up spending less on options. This car, for instance, has just £2,245 worth. The A1, 4,117, and the Mini, 7,375 pounds worth of options. Still, you'll get more of your money back with the Mini and the Audi than you will the DS3 when you come to sell them on. So, where does that leave us? Well, all of these are small cars with plenty of panache. The Audi is the easiest to drive. The DS3, the best value. But the one which delivers the best feel-good factor is the Mini, and ultimately, that's what these cars are all about. Click over there to see the individual in-depth video reviews of each of the cars in this test. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. Now, did you know the most expensive options fitted to any of the cars which we tested was the watch strap leather on the DS3. It cost £1,300.